Howdy folks, Max Mogren, oilfreefun.com, MOG blog, June 20th, 2013. Today we're talking about American obesity, uh, consumerism, sustainability, the many meanings of sustainability, and overpopulation slash depopulation agenda. If you've ever looked at a yearbook from the 60s, 70s, early 80s, or watch old movies, um, you'll notice that, well, especially yearbooks, because movies, obviously, they have attracted people in the movies. But uh, you look at yearbooks, and you'll notice real quickly that pretty much everybody was in decent shape. By today's standards, a lot of, most of the people would be considered skinny. And even the fattest people in those old yearbooks uh, don't really look that fat. Certainly not fat by modern standards. And why is that? You know, it partially is, uh, you know, people getting lazy, watching more TV, uh, more options to just sit on your butt. But I think that it ha has more to do with our food supply. Specifically, uh, back then people were eating, for the most part, real food. And now we've got genetically modified foods, food additives, perverted preservatives, artificial sweeteners, uh, packaged foods, processed foods, and most of these foods are laden with salt, sugar, and fat. I just read the book, Salt, Sugar, and Fat, a while ago, and it was pretty good, and it really lays this out. It shows how the market for junk food has grown in the U.S. over the last couple decades, and how that market, you know, the people producing that food don't care about the, the health of the people eating it. They don't care about the health of the consumers, as they would put it. All they really care about is their bottom line. And when reading that book, it was interesting. Uh, different food corporations, uh, be it Kraft, Nestle, whoever, it talked about times in their past when they have tried to make their food healthier and how Wall Street smacked them down and basically, you know, ruined their stock price. Their stock price plummeted when it came out that they were going to start producing healthier foods, healthier processed foods, healthier junk foods. And uh, that was definitely a recurring, reoccurring theme throughout the book, Salt, Sugar, Fat. I encourage you to read it. It's like uh, Super Size Me, Fast Food Nation, Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, in terms of making people, or helping people, I should say, evaluate uh, what they eat and why. But, you know, obesity in America is a relatively recent trend, and it parallels the rise of junk food. Junk food whose bottom line is controlled by Wall Street. You know, they're all just trying to make a buck. And they don't care about the health of the people. They don't even refer to us as people. They refer to us as consumers, okay? Consumers, you know, watch the news, read the paper. They talk about consumers, not people, not Americans. Consumers, you know, consumer confidence, consumer price index. We're not even referred to as people. And it's, it's kind of an apt term, because when was the last time you really produced something, you know? But at the same time, humans is a much better, you know, human beings, how about that? Much better term to describe the total person, not just their habits of consumption, right? And on a similar vein, sustainability, okay? Sustainability, we hear these same, these corporations, these Wall Streeters, these bankers, these big multinational corporations, these big governments, the UN and other manifestations of global government talking about sustainability. Now, at first glance, that sounds like environmentalism, but is it really? Let's think. Sustain. Okay, sustaining something doesn't mean changing it. Sustaining, sustaining something does not mean making it better for the planet or even better for the people who are part of the system. All it really means is making it sustainable. 
and as we all know, as I hope you know, the current system that we live within, the economic, political, financial, monetary, media, healthcare, food, etc. system that we live within is not sustainable, inherently not sustainable. So anybody who talks about sustainability without talking about a radical overhaul of the current system, radical economic, financial, political, uh, local, regional, and global changes, is not an environmentalist, and they are in fact just encouraging us to perpetuate the status quo business as usual with a sweat slight tweak uh, to greenwash it and with the overall objective of merely making the system more sustainable. Now, as I said, the current system is inherently unsustainable because it's built on the notion of infinite economic growth within the constraints of a debt-based fiat currency controlled by a private central banking cartel that's profit driven, right? Everybody looking out for themselves, you know, the Gordon Gecko philosophy, greed is good, it's not actually true. Uh, the notion of everybody looking out for themselves and it somehow uh, amalgamating into a system that works for everyone is bull honky. The current system thrives on suffering. The current system thrives on human poverty, on stress, on sickness, on warfare, on death, on wastefulness. And if you need proof of that, just look around you. You know, what are the most profitable systems in the world today? Warfare, uh, healthcare that is not preventative, you know, pharmaceutical drugs, drugging people. Um, fossil fuels, you know, raping the land, taking all this uh, fuel out of the planet and putting it into the atmosphere, not smart, and just assorted other, you know, development, overdevelopment, you know, changing the landscape, cutting down trees, uh, replacing small-scale local agriculture with industrial, genetically modified, chemically fertilized and pesticided uh, agribusiness. You know, these are the systems that are profitable within the current system. A consolidation of power at the top and the so-called trickle-down where the rest of us get pissed on. Okay? That is the system that the business interests, the corrupt politicians, the banking class, wants to sustain. And what's interesting, within the system that we have today, uh, one of the governing laws is supply and demand, right? Now we're stuck with these fossil fuels because the most efficient and revolutionary energy technologies have been suppressed. Yes, yeah, solar, wind, hydroelectric, geothermal, these things have been bought out and derailed, but they haven't been straight up suppressed in the sense that most people know they exist. I'm talking about uh, magnetic energy, you know, the so-called perpetual motion machines, the holy grail. We've been taught to believe that perpetual motion is impossible, yet we live on a perpetually spinning planet, orbiting a perpetually energy-emitting sun uh, in a perpetually spinning solar system in a galaxy, universe, etc. It's all in motion. It's all energy. It's all, you know, it's all in movement, right? If the Earth stopped moving, we would die. Therefore, all of us depend on a perpetual motion machine for our day-to-day -day existence, right? If the sun stopped burning, we'd be cooked. Or I should say, burning is the wrong term. Burning is an inaccurate term. If the sun stopped shining, the sun, sun, shot, stopped, the sun stopped emitting uh, electromagnetic energy, 
uh, we would die. Another, for all practical purposes, perpetual energy generator that we have, that all life on Earth depends on. So, within the current system, we're stuck with these outdated, primitive, combustion-based energy technologies, which builds the notion of artificial scarcity into the system. There isn't enough, you gotta pay to play. You know, you gotta fill your gas tank. You can't just have a water-powered car because there's no money in that for the top dogs, right? And uh, so within that system, this artificial scarcity in energy and in money, most people don't have enough money and the system is set up that way. Uh, these two combined factors and also, you know, artificially scarce knowledge, you gotta pay for knowledge these days, thank God for the internet. It's artificial scarcity and in information, money, energy, gives us this system of supply and demand where the supply of a commodity goes down, the price goes up, and vice versa, okay? Now, within the constraints of the existing system, there's plenty of land, there's plenty of water that we could purify if we unleashed free energy technologies. Uh, the limiting factor is energy, really, the fossil fuel energies. So, what do we have? The price goes up, you know, demand goes up as more people come into the system, the price goes up as the supply cannot meet demand, and there are shortages, there are price spikes, it's not a pretty situation. So, within the current constraints of the system, those who call for sustainability without acknowledging revolutionary technologies and alternative lifestyles, they need to equalize supply and demand. So what do they do? Well, for the last 40 years, they've been harping about overpopulation and how the planet is overpopulated. Too many people is what they say, not what I say. I don't think the problem is too many people. And I'm sure you don't think it's too many people when you consider the fact that you and I and everybody you know and care about have been labeled consumers by the people pushing this overpopulation notion onto us. Therefore, uh, you know, that's just another term for uh, worthless eaters, right? So, this overpopulation bunkum is not entirely true. It's not a population problem. It is a consumption problem. It is a lifestyle problem. You know, if the uh, if the, um, the amount of resources wasted in wars, wars being very profitable for a very small number of people and horrible for the rest of us on the planet, if the resources used for wars were used to uh, build small-scale local organic agriculture, walkable and bikeable cities and towns, uh, you know, the proper systems for purifying, desalinating water, etc. Poverty would be solved and people would be able to live without working such meaningless jobs and without living such wasteful lives, right? If you didn't have to drive to work every day, you didn't even have to work every day, and you could put in a couple hours every day working on the local organic garden or in the local organic hydroponic greenhouses or, you know, repairing perpetual motion machines in your garage, you're not uh, wasting that many resources. If you don't need, you know, if you've got your electrical needs met by a magnetic energy generator, you've got your transportation needs met by bicycles and water-powered cars, you know, you got heat, you got light, you got transportation, all, imagine just fossil fuels just being cut out. There's no overpopulation problem. There's no climate change problem in that situation beyond monitoring and making sure that people aren't playing God with the weather because that technology, you know, these 
unlimited energy technologies open up a realm where that is a possibility. And you can see evidence of that happening in the sky on an almost daily basis around the world. We got that here today. Beautiful Wyoming. But with the overpopulation agenda comes the depopulation agenda. And if you're paying attention, if you're a health nut, and you wonder why you know, food is so expensive, healthy food's expensive, junk food is cheap, right? Clean water's expensive, most municipal water supplies are poisoned with fluoride and a bunch of other crap. You know, alternative medicine is cheap but nobody has access to it. Allopathic pharmaceutical medicine is very expensive. Cost prohibitive to almost everyone. So, the more you study the, the big picture and the more you focus on your own personal health and the ways to truly stay healthy in a world where uh, it sure seems like somebody's out to poison your ass and kill you young, and I'm not saying that because of, uh, well, I'm just saying that because that's what I believe, you know? I've researched enough to, uh, to believe that, and it's not it's based on very rational decisions, very rational observations. I'm certainly not alone in holding that perspective. But, long story short, sustainability is not environmentalism. Overpopulation is not the problem. Overconsumption is the problem. Uh, people would generally live much less resource and energy intensive lifestyles if given the opportunity. Referring to human beings as consumers, referring to human beings as human resources, reveals how the corporate banker representative government fiat currency financial system infinite growth economy model is fundamentally flawed in that it does not respect human life or any life for that matter take a look around any civilization that accepts war and accepts the destruction of the of vast expanses of the planet, poisoning of the oceans, the poisoning of the air, intentionally, mind you, in the air at least, uh, is not respecting humans or the planet that we depend on for life. And obesity is a hallmark of the situation. You know, they, there's a global food price index and when it gets to a certain point, civil unrest, you know, riots, protests, uh, localized conflicts are inevitable because people can't afford to eat. So if you were a leader of the global elites and you were plotting a method to deal with the overpopulation problem that you created, and you didn't want people to protest, one of the most logical and simplest and foolproof ways of killing a bunch of people without them knowing would be to provide them with delicious, low-cost, poisonous food, poisonous water, poisonous chemicals in the air, poisonous chemicals in common everyday products poisonous electromagnetic radiation emanating from your smartphone, your conventional cell phone, your tablet PC, your you know, your laptop PC, your compact fluorescent light bulbs, your smart meter, your 2.4 or 900 giga 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz cordless phone at home. Um, and a whole host of other sources of electromagnetic pollution. So do your homework, uh, take care of yourself. I feel like the best thing that we can do 
to really fight this thing because it's not like, you know, the era of armed revolt is over. These guys have got a monopoly on force. And frankly, I don't want to fight. And I like the, the Bob Marley club. If you want to win the revolution, you must win it with Rasta. Rasta being Rastafarianism or just the, the general attitude conveyed by, by uh, you know, guys like Bob Marley who knew what they were talking about. They were talking about love, universal love, and uh, respect. You, know, you must win it that way because if you win any other way, you're going to fight again. When you're Rasta, there will be no more war. Right? And so the best thing, the best way to fight this is to raise awareness, to encourage people to take care of themselves and to take care of those they love. Simple. Take care of your family, your friends, your community, your pets, and just live in a way that, uh, that improves that and that boycotts the people who are referring to you as consumers, uh, pretending that we have an overpopulation problem instead of an overconsumption problem, poisoning the food you eat, and generally making a big fucking mess out of our entire planet. That's all I got today, folks. Y'all take care of yourselves. Peace.